run into that all the time up north. Can you follow them up on a speech or something? <laughs> Everybody up? Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, the Republican tax bill in the Senate this morning was a, not a big surprise, but a really big disappointment. Uh, the chair announced that there were no tax increases in it, but in addition to $105 million in tax increases on renters, the cuts in local government aid and all the other things will total about $320 million more in property taxes for homeowners. The only thing that might be surprising in the bill, at least to me, was that while we're cutting, we're increasing taxes on homeowners and renters, uh, the business community doesn't have to worry. They're proposing to phase out and then totally eliminate the corporate tax cut, the corporate, the state property tax for corporations. They're totally eliminating that. It's a $114 million tax cut in this two-year period, and it multiplies in future years until it's totally gone. So it's a big disappointment to see that. The cuts in local government aid and county aid and so on will increase property taxes in addition to causing great harm. I met with one of the local cities I represent last night. They have one squad car on the street. They share the police services with another community. They say, where do we cut? Do we just say, well, we're not going to have any police protection for half the day? Where do we make the cuts? What are we going to do? If we cut local government aid, they're making huge cuts here, and they're going to pay for it use that money to pay for tax cuts for corporations, and I think that's wrong. Senator, where do you come up with $320 million? It's uh, $630 million is what their, their cuts in aids and credits to local governments and so on, and the current numbers that are used by both the legislature and the governor es estimate that about half of that will be levied back, and the other half will be just pure cuts. But again, as I said, these cities don't know what they're going to do yet. Um, the city I was talking to, they have one tiny park. They have no services. They, they plow the roads. They patch the potholes. They provide water, police protection. What do we cut? They said, we've cut so much in past years, there's nothing left. We're going to be increasing taxes and deciding if we can't have 24-hour day police protection in the metro area. I don't think they'll, have, they'll be able to make that choice, but that's what would be the consequences if this happened. Would you expect them to be no. Well, I, I think <laughs> the governor's been very clear about, I think, two things. Uh, first is he wants a more progressive tax system in Minnesota. That means less reliance on property taxes. The second thing that he's been uh, very clear about is he wants to restore the partnership between the state and our local units of government. You know, many of the services that, are, that people in our communities uh, depend on are carried out at the local level. And uh, the state has been a very poor partner over the plenty years uh, in helping uh, cover some of the costs, especially in uh, communities that have low tax pace, uh, old infrastructure. Uh, the state, uh, I know the governor feels very strongly, and, and Senate Democrats feel very strongly about rebuilding that partnership between the state and our local units of government. This bill just continues down the same old path. Uh, local governments are the problem. We're going to cut aid to them. We don't care uh, how much property taxes go up, and, and we object to that. The, you, you guys have been in the same position last year in producing a budget. How would you characterize the process this year compared to past years, and, and how, how rock solid, in your view, is, is the Republican budget coming out of the, uh, out of the Senate? Well, I think uh, there's some unknowns. Uh, I, I think what's interesting, and maybe you can ask them this question, is when the budget targets were released, uh, what, two weeks ago about? The, the tax target for the tax committee uh, on their sheet was $780 million. Well, when they handed out their spreadsheet today, it's $580 million. So where is the $200 million? Uh, obviously, the, the cut in the tax bill is $200 million less than what's, the, what's in their targets. Uh, what I'm a little disappointed about is the Senate rules clearly say that uh, gives the majority leader the authority to adjust targets, but they have to be publicly announced. So uh, that wasn't publicly announced, that the tax target was cut by $200 million. So my, my question kind of is, if the tax target was cut by $200 million, we have the same amount of money, what were the impacts to the other budget bills that nobody knows about at this point? Now, I would say the targets uh, that were originally proposed are totally inaccurate. Something's off by $200 million. Of the new chair men and women to, to do the job to some extent. 
do you see any results of that in this tax bill? Is it a freshman tax bill or is it well, I, I, I would ask the question, you know, if the target changed by $200 million, what caused that? I mean, was there some discussion in their caucus, or why would that target have moved by $200 million? And then what, somebody had some impact that that was changed. I don't know why it wasn't publicly announced, uh, but I think you would have to ask them what happened there. But I think to me it shows that they're, they're obviously having some problems in their caucus, or they wouldn't be adjusting targets, and the fact that they didn't publicly announce them probably re reaffirms that. Are you surprised that uh, they didn't deliver on the corporate tax, income tax reduction that, that was their top priority? Well, uh, they, you're right, that's a good point. I wasn't thinking about the fact that since that bill is not moving separately, that they didn't have it in here. They did have the, they did have the property tax, the state wide property tax or corporations, they eliminate that over time. Um, it was a big cost to the state treasury, so they're only phasing it out, but the bottom line is they have that in, and yes, you're right, they didn't have what they called their top priority, the corporate income tax cuts. Uh, maybe they're hearing from the public that the public's tired of having ordinary people have their taxes go up and the business taxes going down. I think maybe they're getting pushed back on that, I don't know, but they didn't include it in there. Well, I think that is pretty interesting. Generally, you, you know, the, the first bill of the session is your number one priority, and the fact that the corporate income tax cut was in there and now hasn't been included in their, their tax uh, committee bill kind of begs the question. You know, they either learned that uh, it actually costs real money to do that, that they didn't have, that the state problems are maybe deeper than what they had anticipated, uh, or like Senator Marty said, that maybe they found out that cutting taxes for uh, corporate, corporate taxes where most of the money ends up flowing to outside of the state is, is not very good policy. Maybe a good soundbite on the campaign trail, but probably not the best policy. John, can you say anything about the uh, health care cuts uh, in the Senate HHS bill today? Um, the we've, just, we've just gone through the Health and Human Services bill for the last two hours, and the first reaction to it is if you were building emergency rooms, you're going to have a lot more business in the next few years because they're just eliminating, I mean, they have all kinds of policy things in their cloning bill, elimination of family planning services, but there are a whole lot of people who are the low-income folks on medical assistance. A whole lot of them are going to be put in a high deductible plan. Uh, there's basically people with high deductible plans can't afford health care if you can't afford to pay those deductibles, and frankly, there are going to be a lot of people without health care. The child care cuts are brutal. Um, it's not going to be a state that we would want to live in if those cuts went through. It, it, it looks like there might be as many as 100,000 taken off uh, health care. Does that square that with what That's you're probably likely. The thing is, a whole lot of the others who are on it, when you're talking about funny money, I mean, they have all kinds of things, unlike in the tax bill where the numbers are pretty transparent. In that bill, they're assuming lots of huge savings from taking people off of things. Um, bottom line is, sick person doesn't stop getting sick when you take away their health care. They use the emergency rooms, and that's going to push to other um, insurance costs for other people, and it's going to cost the counties and everybody who runs the hospitals a lot more money. Well, I think to that point and to, and to Rachel's point about their capacity, uh, to put bills together that balance. I, I think there's a serious question to be asked about the accuracy of the, or if there even are, fiscal notes that back up all of the provisions. Uh, I know the governor's got some grave concern about that, that they actually are creating phony money uh, to balance the budget. And I just would ask them that when they produce uh, their budget bills that they be backed up by uh, nonpartisan staff fiscal notes so that we know the savings that they're claiming to get are real that they aren't just something concocted uh, uh, by the Republican Party. Back to the tax bill, does it surprise you at all that uh, the, the Senate approach has, has differs in so many ways from the House tax bill? Or is that typical? Well, I don't, I don't know enough about the House to comment on that. Uh, you know, there's a, a, a metropolitan tax chair in the Senate and a rural tax chair in the House, so I, I guess they probably come at it from, from different avenues, just from where they personally come. Does it seem like this, uh, this uh, move to take transit uh, sales tax money and spend on other things, is that like a backdoor tax increase? Um, I mean, I mean, there, there are lots of those things all over. Firefighters were in the Judiciary Committee 
yesterday in uniforms, room a lot hotter than this, and they're wearing um, EMT clothing and hazardous suits, hazmat suits, and so on. And they're talking about the fact that the judiciary budget takes eight and a half million dollars out of an insurance premium surcharge that the state put on under Pawlenty four years ago. Half the money, more than half the money, has not gone to the firefighter stuff. It's going to, it's going to balance the budget. And so, in effect, we're either not going to train firefighters, or we're going to be using, um, we should be using that money what it was raised for. But that was a surcharge for that purpose. And I think you're going to see a lot of that kind of gimmick where they take money from some other purpose and put it in to balance the budget. You know, you know, on the transit tax issue, the legislature gave county boards authority to impose a quarter percent sales tax for transit. That's, that is specifically what county boards voted on. And now for the legislature uh, to come along uh, a couple years later and say, well, we realize that's what you voted, county commissioners, that's what you voted to use the money for, that's what the authorization was for. But we've decided uh, as a, a legislature, we're now going to take that money for deficit reduction at the state level. That is that, that's just one more example of how this legislature is is just breaking faith with local units of government. And I just think, and I know the governor thinks, we have to be stronger partners with our local governments. Is there another round of cuts coming to the DFL caucus staff? In particular, might there be um, uh, two, or, you know, one LA for every two senators? Is anything like that coming along in this budget that you know of? Uh, it's nothing that uh, Senator Koch has talked to me about. Uh, uh, I, I I think. You know, there could be some adjustments uh, to Senate staffing levels depending on what the ultimate cut in the final budget solution is. Uh, you know, we don't, I guess we'll see what is negotiated out with the governor relative to cuts in the executive branch and, and, the, and both bodies of the legislature, and that may require some adjustments based on the money available. Uh, there, I mean, there are serious problems in the Senate budget uh, because uh, we self-insure for unemployment, so those, you know, the, the DFL caucus laid off 42 people at the end of session, we're paying unemployment for them. We're paying cash uh, because uh, we don't have, uh, we don't participate in the state trust fund. So uh, to the extent that some of those people were able to find employment, it's saving the Senate budget some money, but to the extent they can't, it's putting a, a, a pretty big drain. We had to pay out all the additional sick pay, uh, all the comp time that people had accumulated, uh, vacation benefits, all had to be paid out in cash. So there's a, uh, there was a reserve for that, but I, I don't think today we don't know uh, to what extent that reserve has been depleted. But I think at the end of the session, depending on the outcome, there you know, may be some adjustments. Now that you've begun to see the shape of the legislature's budget, do you believe that we will be out here, out of here by May 23rd? Well, I think like I've previously said, it, it is going to depend on the willingness of this Republican legislature to compromise with the governor. Uh, the governor has proposed uh, $2.6 billion in uh, a tax increase. This legislature has said, as far as sales and income tax, state general fund taxes, they're not going to support a tax increase, even though property taxes uh, are going to continue to go up exponentially. Uh, tuition's going to go up exponentially. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, depend on the willingness of uh, the governor and the Republican legislature to compromise. And uh, I don't know, there's a number somewhere between 0 and 2.6 at the end of the day that uh, they're going to need to agree on, and it, it's probably not going to be 2.6, and it's not going to be zero. But you've seen the outlines of the legislature's budget. Do you see compromise in there? Does it make it more or less likely that you're going to be here in July? Well, I mean, this just, uh, I think, reaffirms uh, where they were at on the campaign trail, that they're going to put an all-cuts budget together, and, and they've done that. This is, I, I guess, what we all expected they would do. It's what they said they were going to do on the campaign trail. Uh, Governor Dayton did what he said he was going to do on the campaign trail with uh, a fourth tier on the income tax. So I don't think any of us should be surprised about where we're at at this point in the session. So you do consider this an all-cuts budget? It's That gets the whole thing. It's cuts in the state part. But, you know, for renters, it's $105 million in tax increase, period. That's in the bill. It's not that the local governments can do that. It's also the estimates from Department of Revenue and legislative nonpartisan staff say it's going to raise property taxes by $300 million some dollars. The reality is those are tax increases. Um, but yes, the way they talk around here, those are all cuts. But, but to the renter who's paying their taxes, today's bill actually has a provision in there directing the commissioner to notify people when their refunds come back that the legislative action is what caused it to go down. 
So in effect, we're going to tax you more. Um, it depends how you define cuts. I mean, tax increases, when they say no tax increases, they've meant property taxes, other things are okay. But um, using their rhetoric, it's all cuts. Using real people language, taxes are going up. Well, I think the, the question is, back to the fiscal notes on some of the provisions, I mean, uh, saying you want to do tax compliance and bringing in some private vendor that says they can raise you $140 million is just reaching for blue sky. Uh, the department, that's not the department's number. Uh, I think the same is true in health and ser human services. The idea that we're going to apply for a federal waiver and then score $300 million of savings because uh, we presume the federal government's going to give us that waiver, uh, that's not real money. Uh, what if the federal government doesn't give us that waiver? I, I mean, it's not, it's, it's phony. And it's an all-cut budget if you assume that all of their uh, presumptions uh, are accurate. But historically here, the legislature has always worked on fiscal notes prepared by the Department of Finance. Now we call them MMB. Uh, this budget doesn't do that. And I think that's a problem. And that's a waiver from the requirement that we provide the care. Is that correct? So basically it's permission to provide less care. Is that correct? That's bottom line what's happening. Sometimes they might be able to afford it if they have money they don't have. The reality is people are going to be denied care, and I'm not sure the federal government is likely to give those waivers. If I had to guess, I'd say they won't. But um, you know, Senator Murray, how about if we just apply for a waiver for three billion? Yeah, I mean, you, you know? could I mean, you could balance the budget quickly by just saying we're not going to do this stuff. Well, first of all, I think I don't think it's a policy the state wants to do, and even if the state did want to do it, I don't think the federal government would allow it. So. It is funny money in that sense. The tax bill doesn't have funny money. It's just raising taxes on renters and homeowners. So what is your assessment of, of Republican leadership's claim that all these bills were going to be full of reform? Have they delivered on, on reform? Or? If reform means higher property taxes for homeowners and renters, they delivered on that. I don't know that that's reform, though. Well, I, I don't. I mean, I don't see reform. I mean, I mean, there's they're just numbers on a spreadsheet. So you cut local government aid and you cut the market value credit. Those aren't new programs. They aren't uh, changing the formula the way money gets distributed. That's why I would think of reform is they're going to make some formulary changes uh, in in the way money is allocated, and that and that's not happening in the Senate bill. Do you have a bird's eye view yet of, uh, of the budget that'll be released on Friday, and what are you most anticipating in the next forty eight hours? The budget on Friday. Well, the GP will release. I mean. When they when we get them all out of yeah. committee, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I don't know if you've had an overall look. I mean, I think we we're each seeing the ones in the committees we're on, but I don't know if we put a look of the whole picture together yet. Well, I don't think we have it. Uh, the Health and Human Service bill is what coming out today. It, it just started. That's what uh, we've been looking at. So, but I don't know. I mean, I think the original target in the Health and Human Service bill was what a one point <coughs> six billion dollar cut. Uh, now, the tax target was changed by $200 million. I don't know, I guess I have no reason to think that the, the, the cut in health and human services is 1.6 because the tax bill didn't come in on target. So I don't know what the finance bills are going to look like. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.